Well, good morning. I hope you can see me. I sat here and made a video earlier and didn't, basically. But I was deleted it and decided I'd make another one. I sat here talking about uh, people uh, that I met in the past. It was interesting stories they had to tell. I was talking about Betty the Riveter, or Weave On. She'd, uh, I met her when I was young, back during the war. And, uh, I was a kid, and I had a line. And, uh, delivering groceries. And, uh, that's what they did back in the days. You didn't have to sack your old food. They, you ring up the drug, uh, the grocery store guy, and he'd, he'd make your order, and they'd bring it to you. I sort of like to do it at Walmart, except you have to go outside and get it. But, uh, I was talking about her. She had married when she was young. Her husband was overseas. I believe he was in the Navy. And, uh, he, uh, he died overseas, sucking the ship or whatever. And, uh, so, uh, she had, I don't know, a few thousand acres. And, uh, she'd run that farm by herself. Well, years later, she married an old boy that, uh, uh, worked on the roads. He drove heavy equipment. She married him. Uh, he, uh, sort of leveled, made some terraces and stuff. She raised cattle, wheat, and soybean. Big, I had not changed the subject, but my dogs kept me up all night. But, uh, that's another story, and I'll tell it in a minute. Uh, but uh, she had an interesting slide. You need to stop, slow down, and listen to some of these people. I always have. I mean, it, you know, it, most people go through life say, oh, yeah, she gave me a job cleaning out the muck in the stalls and this, that, and the other shit. Uh, and that's about it. No, if you stop and listen to them, they've got some interesting things to say. Uh, when she died, uh, before she died, she gave me a little old deal that uh, uh, you, you made circles with it and this, that, and the other. I wanted it to remember her by, Weave On. Uh, I wish she gave me anything she, uh, she had. She never had no kids. Uh, she had some nieces and nephews. But anyway. Stop and listen to some of these people. They got some interesting, they had an interesting life. In life, if you get up and do something every day, you'll have a lot of memories. You end up with a lot of memories. And uh, that's what you're going to take to the grave is your memories. You ain't going to take, take no baubles. <laughs> no gold, no diamonds, no rubies, no land. You don't get that six by three foot square or plot. It's the memories you take with you. Interesting people. I used to listen to my grandmother all the time. People don't believe she lived that long, but that's what the Bible said. You know, nobody remembers the day they was born. Uh, but she told me. I always listened to her. She remembered Contrail and his raiders. They came up north. She ended up marrying an old boy who went down south to Arkansas during the Reconstruction. He died. Uh, and so she left Arkansas with, uh, let's see, three kids. A riding pony, which the oldest boy rode, he wasn't about six. Uh, she, uh, let's see, seven milk cows and a bull would make eight, and two head of, uh, two oxen that pulled the wagon. 
and she came to Oklahoma. Before the run of 89. And she could tell you some stories. She served old pretty boy Floyd. It was an outlaw. Breakfast one morning, he left her $20 bills. $20 was like I was leaving, I don't know, 2000 back in the day. She could tell you some interesting stories. My point about this is, is stop. Listen to some of these old people. Before they die off, they've been dying like flies. They've all got some interesting stories. And I ain't saying the young people don't uh, have interesting stories, but the thing about it is they've not lived long enough. You know, you take an old person that's lived 60, 70, 80, 90 a years, 100 years, they got some interesting life. They went through presidents. <coughs> oh, Woodrow Wilson, I can tell you, started off with him. I've lived through a lot of presidents. I, believe, I mean, your life is what you make it. And, and, and whether you want to or not, there's interesting stories in your own life. But you can get inspiration, uh, knowledge from a lot of these people that's got a bunch of it. The trouble of it is, it's like, you know, uh, they run around, stick them in a nursing home, or they live like me. Uh, I sit here and live by myself. Nobody comes. If they do, it's very seldom. Like my daughter, she came and said, Oh my God, Dad, you're getting worse about your hoarding. She's seen all these stones and jewelry and these boxes I bought and stored up and to make jewelry out of. I said, Yeah, and your job is getting rid of it when I'm dead. She said, Yeah, I'm going to call in and point at it like it and <laughs> give it to the Goodwill. Uh, she don't need it. But that's what I'm saying. You've you got to make life interesting for yourself, and it's up to you to make it interesting. Life, life is worth living, so get out there and live some of it. You know. And if you don't like your situation, only you can change it. You know. And that's what I'm getting at. I started a lot of hobbies, and I've got a lot of them stacked up in here. God's been good to me, and I've been thankful ever since. We can't say you've been good to God, because we ain't. <laughs> we all fail in the eyes of God. But He loves His children. Or His creation, basically, is what He told us. i got to get out there and work on that to finish up that ambulance today, because it's going to rain tomorrow. I got a little bit of counter work to do, and uh, a little bit more work in the cab. Straighten it up. You know, if you're interested, in, I make a video. If you want me to put it up, I will. It's a glass bottle. Actually, it's a choker. You put this thing through here, and you make it. And it's a choker. That's what I'm saying. You, you, you'd be surprised what you could get into and dabble with. I'm too old to work on a job or do anything else. I'm a person that had a little bitty neck could wear that. I'd make an ankle bracelet out of it. Uh, but uh, I've seen so many people bored out of their ever life. Loving mine, doing the same thing day in and day out. You can take a picture of them, the routine, uh, and go back five years later, and they're still doing the same damn routine. They haven't changed a bit. We are creatures of habit. But my whole theory behind it is, it, it's it's your life, and if you won't have one, just existing, is it is that good enough? You know, is that all you want in life, to just to exist? You know, 
I want more out of life than just existing. It, and I think everybody does. You know, if they want more, they just don't know how to go around and battle. Do something new every day. I don't care if it's uh, uh, putting on your shoes. Well, I put on my right put the shoe, left shoe first, then my right shoe. No, we well, change it. Vice versa. Do something different. Make your life more interesting because it's up to you. It ain't, it ain't up to anybody else. Oh, 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 you know, no, it's up to you. Change it uh, or uh, make it more exciting, make it more interesting. You know, if you don't like her, it's like my grandmother. She didn't like her situation down there after her husband died. She got married to a young woman, 18, I think. She's a Spencer's, according to most people. And he died by the time she was, I don't know, 21 or something like that. She had a kid every year or something like that. I think it was 26 when she, he died as she was 26. But anyway, uh, but she didn't like her situation with her brother-in-law. He treated her bad, him and his wife. So she took her three kids and her own oxen and her own, and her own wagon and her own stuff that didn't even belong to her husband when she came. Because since she was an 18-year-old woman, she had a bunch of stuff on her own. And she came from Pennsylvania. The old capital of the world, I think. The dairy capital of the world. I don't know where it is or not, but anyway. They had a lot of people that raised uh, Cattle up there, milk cows, mainly not stock. Made a lot of cheese. Cottage cheese, big lumps of cheese. She didn't like her situation. She loaded her family up, her <coughs> three kids, and made her, got to the Arkansas River. She didn't have much money, so she couldn't pay for fat passage on a ferry across, so she built her. Uh, a raft and floated across herself. And that was a, a mile, you know, a mile across the Arkansas River and she floated herself. Milk cows to follow the bull. And all she had to do was tie his butt to the raft and the milk cows followed right along. And my, my, Uncle David, he rode the riding pony, he wasn't about six. He brought up the rear. Hmm. My dad was still on the breast. He was about, I don't know, three months old, something like that, three or four months old. Uh, he died, her husband died, she was about two or three months pregnant. What life's all about, making a life for yourself. The dogs got into it, I'm going to tell you that story last night. Got me a big boy and Oreo was fighting. Boy, and I was irritated. Oh, uh, little, uh, li big boy, well, little guy, he looked at me like, oh, I didn't start nothing. He was in bed with me. Baby girl, she never even moved underneath her covers on the divan. Big boy kept running to me like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Ori, he went to run under the bed and grumbling. I said, oh, well, you're like the prison days. You're raised in a prison. We just trained in a prison. I guess they had, but he, he, we'd get on him, he'd run and get under the bed. I guess that's all they could get under when he was pup in the prisons being trained to run and get under the bed and grumble. And he will, he'll grumble at you. He's a talking chihuahua. I've got a little bit more stuff to do out there in the ambulance. I've got to finish up the back and do some a little bit more stuff in the cab and then I'll make a video. But no, slow down and listen to everybody's story. I mean, is your life all that busy that you can't listen to someone else's story? That's what I'm getting at. I mean, I like to sit around and try to find people older than me and listen to their story, even younger than me. 
But there's a lot of people that live interesting lives, and there's no reason that you cannot live an interesting life. Because what you do is you, I mean, you know. I'd be like, okay, I want to travel. Hmm. Well, I don't have no skills. No housekeeping skills, this, that, and other. But I can sew. Now, how can I, this is a woman that would be talking. Uh, and she, well, I, I want, you can go get on a ship. And these people that travel on a ship, uh, they tear their clothes, they lose a button, this, that, and the other. They get ready for a party or whatever on board. And they need a seamstress to fix their clothing, take it in, let it out, whatever the hell they need to do. And they give you free passage. You see what I'm saying? So therefore you can take your penny ass social security check uh, and, and, and be a seamstress on a ship, for instance, and, and travel. It's the same way, uh, man, well, I don't have, you know, I can fix this and fix that. Well, be a handyman somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You can travel across the country uh, being a handyman at certain places like motels, hotels, high-rise buildings. You don't have to stay there forever. Stay a couple of months and move on, you know. You don't have to mooch and beg and... And all this stuff off of other people, you can make a life for yourself. Like I always said, this kid I was talking to, he's like 26 years old. He said, well, you got it made. Well, I intended to have it made in my old age. But I told him, I said, if, you, if I get to keep my knowledge and retain everything I know, and I would trade you everything I own for being 26 again. Because it wouldn't take me long till I'd already have everything I own back and I'd be young. But life don't work that way. I said, don't uh, envy somebody else's stuff when you've got the same opportunity to get it yourself. You know, if you stop and listen to others and get your finger off of Google all the time. I mean, that's something, I mean, it's all right to use it as a tool, but nobody reads a book anymore. You will retain more knowledge by reading a book than you were you would hit in Google. Uh, what year was the Civil War started? Okay, you know, tells you. Well, then you forget it. But if you read a book about the Civil War, you remember, oh yeah, and then and, and about Atlanta burning. You, I mean, this the world is open up to you. You never have to leave. You, and they got them online now. You, I like paper book myself, but you can eat a lot of them. You know, can't go to the library. Well, you can read books online. Well, I don't read that well. Well, then it's it's a skill that you can, you can master. My spelling ain't worth a damn. That's my biggest problem. I can read like hell, but I can't spell worth a damn. And don't ask me why. I get in a hurry. Leave out an I or a, I leave out a vowel all the time. A vowel all the time or leave out a letter. <laughs> like double L's. I'll just put one hell. That's good enough. But you gotta, you gotta pay attention more. I get up and I do things that people half my age don't do. Well, yeah, I, have, I hurt and I suffer over it, but at least I get to do something. Because there'll be, like the Bible says, there's plenty of rest in the grave. There's, that's when the time you rest is when you go to the grave. Well, I ain't ready for the grave yet, so I got, you know, there's no work in the grave. That's what the Bible says. Well, we've, um, Betty the Riveter. She had an interesting line. <clears throat> That's what makes a person is their memories, what they got, what they did. You know, I've traveled most around the United States, and I've traveled all around the world, seen a lot of countries, did a lot of things. Hell, 
my backpack across Europe when it wasn't even popular. <laughs> you can pick up side work over there. You didn't have to have a visa or any of that stuff, mainly, back in the day. You run across soldiers on both sides that uh, uh, went AWOL. Yep. They run to Switzerland or they run to a different country. Yeah, American soldiers that couldn't hack it anymore, they decided they'd just go AWOL. They did it in Vietnam, they did it in every war. I had a woman one time uh, contact me from, I think it was Italy. She was looking for a James in my, in my last name, and I, <coughs> she uh, wanted me to know if I knew him, and I didn't know him. But uh, she had, now, she was doing it like, I don't know, 15 years later, 20 years later, I think it was 15 years later after the war. She didn't need no money or anything else, but she had a kid off of, had a young son, and she, he wanted to know about his daddy, and she tried to find him. A lot of that went on. If you was born during the war, Second World's War, or any war, basically, you need to find out if your daddy is really your daddy. You can check that out by younger siblings or older siblings. Wouldn't make no difference. But a lot of kids that was born during the war, they wouldn't born, they wasn't created by their parents, at least one side of them anyway. And that's true. There's an old woman one time trying to tell me about World War Two, and I said, lady, I was alive in World War Two, and that did happen. Not often, but it did happen. <coughs> I guess I better let you go. I got to. Today I'm going to eat breakfast, because usually I didn't eat breakfast until 6 o'clock in the afternoon. I got the trembles after that. But I'm going to eat me something this morning before I get started. Probably started around 11 today. It's supposed to warm up pretty good. I washed clothes after I came in. I washed all the dog blankets, all six or eight of them. I took them out of the ambulance and I washed every one of them. Then I, I pick out the good ones and put them back. Mm. They're, all their laundry will be done. I've got three more blankets in the floor and a towel that I'm going to pick up and throw in the washer today. Uh, I do more of their laundry than I do my own. About every three or four, about every week I'll pick up their blankets. Every three or four or five days and wash them, throw down new ones. Big boy gets where he pees on one of them. I told him, boy, you need to quit that dominance. Then he pees on one so he can show everybody that's my blanket. I said, well, you're the one that'll sleep under it. Uh, well, I better let you go. But like I said, be kind and considerate to all things. Get out and do anything that you think is interesting for you to do. And only you can answer that. It could be anything. But sitting around feeling sorry for oneself does not accomplish anything for yourself or anything or anybody else. You know. Like I said, I probably got it in this house. I keep digging the paint. It's in one of them other houses. Or at the barn or at the shop. You know. Usually, like I said, I'll get irritated one morning and I'll pack up a bunch of stuff and Go take it down to the shop. Stack it in there. Like I told my daughter, I said, you need to go through things. It's like my wife. I found $5 in coat pockets, $20 in coat pockets. I found a set of earrings in another jacket. Uh, but when I gave her all of her clothes away, I had to sort through all that stuff and make sure there wasn't nothing that I wanted to keep in the pockets. Because she always stuffed stuff in her pockets. I've had a lot of her jewelry that way. Be surprised what you can do in life. But if you just sit on the couch feeling sorry for yourself, you ain't going to enjoy life. 
life is made to you enjoy it. As long as you don't harm someone else or become a burden to someone else, it is out there for the taking. You know. Everybody, you know, money, everything, and uh, you find out that your health is the most important thing in the world. It is keeping your health. And it is pretty hard to keep sometimes. Take care of yourself. Be considerate. And I guess I'm going to let you go. We'll raise up. And so I can do things today. Good Lord, I talked for 25 minutes.